One of Genshin's most curious 5 stars in my opinion anyway has always been Albedo. From a narrative standpoint, he's deeply connected with the mythos involving the Hexen Circle, a coven of witches that Cleese's mother Alice is a member of. We also had two opportunities to further explore his involvement in Mondstadt and the overall Genshin universe through Dragonspine and his affiliation with it, giving him some of the most thorough development out of any non-Archon Quest relevant characters. Or in all honesty, more development than even some characters directly involved in Archon Quest. From a gameplay standpoint, there's a lot of mystery about him too. In the eyes of those who went through the effort of exploring the extent of his abilities, Albedo is considered to be a very worthwhile character with a lot going for him. But for everyone else, he appears to be a suboptimal if not downright unusable character due to circumstance. I've gotten comments over the years from people asking me why I haven't made a why no one plays for Albedo when there's plenty of evidence suggesting he belongs in that criteria. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't sure if he deserved one. I was of the opinion that he had Kokumi Syndrome where everyone's poor assessment of him stemmed from misinterpreting what he was all about. So I bided my time waiting for more information to come out and uh, nothing really changed about him. Statistically, Albedo is not the least popular 5 star out there. At least if we go by Spiral Abyss data from the past few iterations, every so often he gets involved in at least the floor too. Even so, collectively I feel like he's not used very often as a character, bringing me to this episode of Why No One Plays, where we'll be exploring Albedo, the most enigmatic character we've talked about in this series so far. Just a moment though before we continue, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor for today, Tower of Fantasy, who is a game I actually had my eyes on for a while. By the time you see this, they launched their version 3.0 update with a ton of new content available including the New World to Domain 9, a secluded sector that bears resemblance to that of ancient China and other Eastern Oriental themes. Alongside the new area is the new story quest where you help Lan solve the crisis affecting Domain 9. One of the maps in the area is the Farewellville, containing new puzzles, explorations, and world bosses for you to check out. To showcase more of the ins and outs of Farewellville, they're introducing the new Smart Servant System, a traveling companion that aids you in battle which you can unlock after completing a side quest. And while we're talking about systems, another incoming one is the new Mentor System. If you ever feel lost after joining or coming back to the game, you can look for a mentor in chat to explore the world faster. Both mentors and mentees get bonus rewards along the way. In celebration of version 3, Liu Ho is finally coming to global release alongside her signature paintbrush, the Pine Comet, and her attacks revolve around actual calligraphy. She and her brother are safeguarders of Farewellville, so you'll be seeing her around a bit. For those of you who played the game on release but haven't in a while, they have a welcome back type event and battle pass that offers rewards for you to catch up on progress. And for new players interested in giving this game a try, be sure to use my link which is in the description below. Thanks again to Tower of Fantasy for sponsoring the video, but for now, back to why no one plays Albedo. As one of the earliest 5 stars in the game, Albedo gave us a taste of the power scaling of them. Initial thoughts on him were favorable, partly due to there being so few options. He was by no means meta-defining, but people were cautiously optimistic about what he could do. Inconveniently though, his timing could not have been worse. Released in version 1.2, he came out literally right after Zhongli, the Geo Daddy himself. And though ironically, Albedo was far stronger than Zhongli before the latter got buffed, character appeal was completely on the side of the Archon, causing Albedo to have poor initial reception since most free-to-play players depleted their supply of Primos the version prior. And even for pay to win types unconcerned with catching them all, the idea of another Geo 5 star after quite possibly the most emblematic Geo 5 star came off as redundant. His sales may look impressive seeing as how it was almost on par with Hu Tao, but a lot of that had to do with Genshin still being brand new and therefore riding off initial hype. Fortunately, he showed great promise even in spite of a somewhat weird playstyle. The inherent flaws of the Geo element went unnoticed for much of version 1 and at that point we were still evaluating every character's own merits instead of their contribution to the team as a whole. Damage wise, he's a sub DPS. After using Solar Isotoma, he created a small field that would deal follow up geo damage whenever enemies within were attacked. Even back then, off field damage was appreciated by most players, as evident by Venti, Shanling, and Xingqiu dominating the early metagame. So there were obvious positives to having Albedo on your team in general, especially since he would give everyone bonus elemental mastery just by pressing his ultimate. Overall, he was a hybrid between dealing damage himself and boosting his team damage. If you were somehow able to max constellation him, then having 17% bonus damage by simply picking up a crystallized shield would make him a rather powerful buffer for the team. In comparison to 5 stars nowadays, Albedo may come off as bare bones, but that in no way detracted from his effectiveness. What really messed him up were the surrounding circumstances, not unlike that of Eula. Both characters, and frankly the majority of Mostat's 5 stars, were victims of circumstance, Albedo being one of the more notable ones. There were three major problems that forced him into this kind of limbo state, and all of them link back to the idea that playing him feels kind of bad. Not mechanically, but he doesn't have a very comfortable spot in, well, anything. First and foremost, because I know all of you are going to clamor about this in the comments begging me to cover this, weapon. 
By a pretty significant margin, Albedo's best weapon is the Cinnabar Spindle, an item that was only available within a 14 to 21 day period back in December of 2021 during the Dragon Spider visit. If you were not around during this time, you essentially can never unlock Albedo's full potential no matter how hard you try. As the second best weapon on him is the Harbinger of Dawn, which is a good weapon mind you, but a far cry from a signature one. Considering Albedo's very specific combat pressure entailing follow-up damage on an elemental skill that scales off his defense, the number of one-handed swords that synergize with this kind of attack is few and far between. If it were a more general stat like say HP, then you can at least make use of Primordial Jade Cutter, which is the blanket statement weapon for any sword user, but even if there are alternatives, knowing that you can never fully tap into the best possible version of Albedo through no fault of your own can be disillusioning for players. It's like playing a game knowing you can never get the DLC. Technically, you can still play the game and enjoy the rest of it, but you'll never fully experience the totality of it. And publishers are very much aware of this, which is why they stack half of the game into DLC nowadays to take advantage of our fear of missing out and squeeze more money from- <laughs> Point being, it sucks knowing the best weapon on a character is completely inaccessible to anyone who didn't play during that time. To some, that may come off as a small inconvenience and not at all enough to dissuade the community from giving him attention. Somewhat true, that alone wouldn't have made the difference, but that wasn't the only factor. Problem number two is that Albedo belongs to the Geo element, quite possibly the worst element in the game in terms of effectiveness and practical use. For a more detailed breakdown on Geo's issues, I suggest you take a look at my episode on it. But to recap, Geo, despite having a reaction with the same elemental correspondence as Animo, is founded on homogeneity, that is, its characters depend on members of the same element to achieve maximum efficiency, Zhongli and Yunxin being the only real exceptions to this. The Mono Geo team is a decently viable rogue strategy thanks to offering magnificent bonuses based on the number of Geo units in your party, so much so that if it wasn't Geo, they would become instantly tier 0. Being a Geo unit who scales off of defense, Albedo would make for a natural good choice, but by putting him into a Mono Geo team, you essentially forfeit the passive talent altogether. The elemental mastery buff he gives to his party is almost entirely useless on Mono Geo since the only reaction you're using it on is Crystallize, which you don't get a whole lot of mileage out of given the fact that you're likely shielded by the Yunjin, Noel, or Zhongli anyway. With Solar Acetoma being considered a Geo construct, it helps out with maximizing their power, but it feels out of place for a Geo unit to have an EM buff when Geo itself doesn't make use of it all that well. That being said, an EM buff is still an EM buff, and really the only thing allowing him to splash into other teams. But even that has issues. Albedo's own damage output is nothing to scoff at, especially if you take advantage of Snapshot and gear him properly. So if you're looking for supplementary damage, you could do worse than him. The Elemental Mastery buff also gives him the opportunity to work with reaction-centric teams, so initially one would think he's versatile. But more often than not, he's only ever a good choice, not a great one. Reaction teams that stand to benefit from charging Elemental Mastery typically require all four party members to be dedicated to the reaction in question, as that's where the team derives most of its damage from. Take Taser for instance. The bulk of his DPS comes from Electrocharged, therefore the party should consist of units that either maximize consistency or efficacy. A sample party would be Sucrose, Fischl, Beidou, and Xingqiu. Xingqiu brings Hydro, Fischl, and Beidou bring Electro. Sucrose can assimilate either element and then buff everyone's EM for max damage. All four members are necessary for this to take effect. Albedo's buff would harmonize nicely with this kind of team, but being a Geo character, he offers no reaction support, making the only benefit of using him being his personal damage and token party buff. This makes him a passing great option for when you have a free slot in your party, but it goes back to him only ever being a good choice, not a great one. That's the core issue with Albedo's design. Because of his inability to drive damaging reactions, Albedo will never be best in slot for any reaction-centric team, leaving only Mono Geo as the team of choice for him. But in Mono Geo, you get virtually no benefit from one of his most important passive talents. He's a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. Tragically, the one niche aspect of his kit being Constellation 4, which increases the damage of plunging attacks by 30%, gets beaten out by the attack boost from Bennett. So the one place where he could be considered best in slot, he's not even best in slot in. Well, technically with enough investment, he does do more for Shao than Bennett, but Bennett heals and is far, far cheaper. Is it really Albedo's fault? Not particularly, I think Hoyo didn't really think things through when designing his kit. Functionally, he has a very powerful kit with a lot of potential. Persistent follow-up geo damage, strong ultimate making him good for quick swap burst rotation comps, really low field time required to use him, he's got options. It's just that in every place you would want to use him, there's something making him not as good of a choice as other characters. Funnily, even with all that said, Albedo is still viewed as a good character because of his versatility, in an element infamous for not having any at all. Much of why he's unpopular doesn't stem from him being bad, but from Geo holding him and by extension everyone else back. As a character, Albedo was balanced around making use of all of his tools to reach meta status. 
You want to maximize the damage of his off-field moves. Then you want to get his EM buff on relevant party members, and if you have Constellation 4, you ideally want one or more of your party members to do plunging attack damage. Plunging attacks have not been expanded on outside of Xiao, who has his own issues. The EM buff is hamstrung by Geo having the worst reaction in the game, which in turn makes Albedo's fall of Geo damage, and just overall Geo damage, not as devastating as it could be. As it stands, there are no situations where you can make full use of all of his faculties at the same time. Hence why I said earlier, it's uncomfortable to use him. At best, he will only ever be a good character, not a great one. You might be wondering why that affects his popularity. For most people, being a jack of all trades is seen as a bad thing in video games. Sure, on one hand you can see that as him being good in a lot of situations, but unless you're fully committed to the waifu over meta ideology, everyone, even casual players, subconsciously gravitate to the most effective tactic available over time. Think about it like this, Genshin's a single player game with no semblance of competition whatsoever, not even a leaderboard showcasing players with the fastest clear time in Spiral Abyss or anything. Even so, more than half of all content related to Genshin via videos, Twitter discourse, Reddit posts, or Discord arguments pertain to guides or discussion over how good a character is and if they're worth pulling for. Common sense would dictate that to fully experience what a game has to offer, it stands to reason that being in the best position to experience it would be the right call, since games are designed around what the player can or can't do. If the option to do something more efficiently is there, why in your right mind wouldn't you take it? People create metas even in non-competitive games because games are designed to not only encourage you to be best prepared for its content but give you the option and freedom to do so at your discretion. Albedo has so many factors and circumstances working against him, that's why the consensus on him is so divided, with some claiming he's criminally underrated, I myself agree with that, and others claiming he's not good. From my perspective, Albedo was intended to be a reaction quick swapper just like his pupil Sucrose, but unlike Sucrose, who belongs to an element with a very powerful and flexible reaction, Albedo belongs to an element that is entirely devoid of elemental applications. Not only that, but as mentioned earlier, if you don't have Cinnabar Spindle, you're never gonna unlock his full strength, which he desperately needs to stay relevant. With you being unable to access all of his supportive capabilities at the same time, the only thing consistent within Albedo's kit is his personal damage output, and to his credit, with enough investment you can get some pretty good numbers on him. Assuming you have Cinnabar Spindle, his best artifact set is Husk of Opulent Dreams, containing a rather overpowered 2 and 4 piece bonus. 30% defense boost is massive for him, and he can get 24% more defense and geo damage from the 4 piece. How it works is that when you're on field you get a stack of curiosity when dealing geo damage, and if you're off field you just generate a stack every 3 seconds, simply by waiting 12 seconds before starting an abyss floor or domain. Provided Albedo's off field he gets all those bonuses for free. At full power he can do some pretty serious damage, but just like with everything else he can't have the cake and eat it too. What's the problem this time? The problem is that Albedo doesn't have the backing of an element. As stated countless times in previous videos, a DPS character's own damage output alone doesn't make them top tier. It's if they can channel reactions on top of good personal damage. I'll hate them's broken because he does great damage while also being part of the element with the two best damaging reactions in the game. Hutal is broken because her Mega Chad personal damage becomes Giga Chad thanks to Vaporize. And Nilu's broken because her Giga Chad personal damage becomes... I don't know what comes after Giga Chad, but you get what I mean. Albedo has personal damage, but that alone isn't enough in this day and age. You need the backing of reactions if you want to get to that next level. Despite being a 5 star, I feel like Albedo suffers from a mixture of Yanfei and Toma syndrome. Like Yanfei, Albedo gets overshadowed by so many other units in terms of damage, even though he's easy to use and very practical. Like Toma, Albedo's kit would be tremendously more efficient if he was any other element. Imagine if he was a Dendro character, snapshotable persistent damage on his skill, elemental mastery shared across the entire team just by using his burst, and said burst dealing damage to either multiple enemies or to one enemy multiple times makes perfect sense for quicken and hyper boom teams. He's just held back by so many things that most players don't see a reason to use him over anyone else. Obviously there's no way Hoyo will ever retroactively change a character's element, but at the very least, they should let any player obtain Cinnabar Spindle, that alone might bring more attention to him. It makes playing him really disappointing for players who want to give him a try but don't have his weapon. Now, if they ever decide to buff characters just like they did with Zhongli, Albedo should definitely be one of them. They released him before Genshin's metagame developed. If they released him after, I guarantee he would have been a lot more efficient, as would have every other 5 star that came out in early version 1. Anyways, I'm rambling at this point so we'll end things off here. I myself enjoy Albedo as a character, he gets a lot of screen time for someone who never appeared in Lost Set's Archon quest, yet it feels so disappointing to use him half the time since you're always giving him something. A good character, I just wish they could give him a dedicated niche. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, if you agree or disagree with my points. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you left a like and subscribed. 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Varsvaren, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why No One Plays episodes after this one. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.